very um, nice uh, to be here with you all um, in these unusual times that we're experiencing working from home, working remotely. Um, and Charmaine is reached out to me and, and, and asked me to just talk a little bit about um, the kind of work that I do in, in DCU, but also to think about a couple of you know tips and tricks that we could explore around connecting with people and around um, developing strength and uh, um, tapping into ways that we can become inspired while we're working from home and while we're feeling very isolated. I know um, my own personal experience is that I was very resistant towards working like this. Um, but my, my, that comes from a place where I work one-to-one um, -one and in group sessions with students in person. So um, I initially was a little bit resistance, resistant and came about to seeing the possibilities of connecting through these means. Well, we, well, we have no other option, um, but I can see the positives and I can see the, um, the, the, the possibilities of connecting with people um, via, via different means. So just a little bit about me. I work in the student support in DCU, which is about um, developing and enhancing students' experience at third level um, with, with students at undergraduate right up to students um, like yourselves who are conducting uh, wonderful PhDs and doing unbelievable research, which I really admire. Um, and our, our, in essence, our work is around developing the student and supporting them through, through challenging times. Um, a lot of our work can be very, very tough and very challenging um, because of the kinds of maybe backgrounds or difficulties that people experience in life. And life is not um, plain sailing, it changes. And it's how we, how we really adapt to, to those changes. And that's precisely what we're in at the moment, is to find the courage and the strength to work through what we're in presently. Um, and th that, that kind of brings me to, to I, when, I, when, when Charmaine said to me, Caroline, do you have any little title yeah. on the, the talk or the piece of work that we can do in, in the next while, short while? I thought of, of strengths. I thought of our individual strengths that you can really learn more about that if you are very aware of your own character strengths, you can um, stimulate your relationships, you can um, further connect with people that you may not have connected with before. Um, it also helps you with your work engagement. So thinking about the research that you're doing and the kind of work that you're absorbed in at the moment, tapping into those character strengths, your individual character strengths, Will, um, will really complement your research and uh, hopefully help you with the, the isolating times that we're in at the moment. It also helps manage stress. So stress is coming up in different ways at the moment while we're at home and we're, while we're feeling isolated um, and a fear really. You know, I know myself, I, I was resistant, as I mentioned earlier on, to, to these remote working sessions. And for me, as, as a, a, from a personal point of view, I find my personal life overlapping into my professional life. So I need to create a good structure and um, be very aware of, of, of separating those two lives because I'm in the home and I'm working from home and that's where my personal life is, it's, it's overlapping. So um, they're, they're the little, the little struggles, I suppose, that I have have faced in the last few weeks, um, but I've I've adapted. I, I find I find that I have adapted, and I've tapped into um, thinking about the the little things as big things. The little things are actually coming up as big things. To think about how I'm actually working at home and how I'm um, applying myself. And I think that I'd love to hear from a couple of you what, what experiences you've been having over the last couple of weeks before we, we go in and we start a, an exercise or, or I go into a few little 
personal hints and tips of my own. I'd love to hear from, from you as regards to how you are um, adapting to this new environment. Would anybody like to share? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm Freyus from South Africa, if you have read my text. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And thank you for providing this uh, opportunity which will help us while we are in whole fight solution. You're very welcome. Okay, uh, apparently I was trying um, to set myself with new courses, with new reading cultures. Uh, I'm in South Africa, as I've said, and we were in a 21 days lockdown. And the first time I heard about this, what I decided to do was to have identified 21 articles which I, I planned to read every day. Uh, and also, I uh, have also taken two online courses. Uh, I've done the first course last week and I'm fighting to complete the second course this week. Fantastic. Uh, and as I've said, I have been trying to read one article per day. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's not a such a simple thing, easy thing to do because I'm living with kids, with family. Yeah. So there are other uh, personal issues which has to be managed. Yes. Uh, but uh, I actually loved the, I actually didn't have the solution because it gave me an opportunity to have quality time with my family. Yeah. Because while you are in study, you run here and there, you, you become busy, you don't get time to properly talk to your kids to give, you don't give time for your family. Yeah. Now it's, it's the only things that you do, you give time, you talk to them. Even uh, my two baby boys are very happy to see me with them every day. So still, uh, I didn't, uh, I'm enjoying it. And as I told you, I've uh, taken two courses. Uh, I'm reading articles, one article per day. Mm. And uh, I'm managing, uh, there is no more stress in my area. I'm actually allowed to walk to shopping once in a day. So I go out like once in a day and I shop and I come back. So I'm struggling to fix the stresses related to this lockdown session. Okay, okay. Thank well, there's a, there's a lot there. Thank you very much. That is really, really fruitful. Um, right. And I think that the there's a lot to be gained from, from the online world and the courses that we can do to enhance and develop our, our own personal growth when it comes mm -hmm. to adapting to this new environment that we're in um, all the time, as you say. Mm -hmm coming and going a lot when you're studying mm. but now you get to sit down and have very meaningful conversations yeah. with family and yeah. um they might they might go in a different direction that they may mm. not have gone before which can yeah. be very um very interesting and a lot there's a lot of growth and learning there too um so that's brilliant thank you for sharing that thank you Karen. anybody else like to share their their challenges and how they've adapted in the new in the new environment that we're in. Yeah, actually, um, hello, I am uh, VK. Oh, so I'm from India, but basically doing my PhD in Japan. So, so what I am facing, like uh, main issue is too much focus on news. Like I also need, I also need to read, okay, what is happening in Japan? And how is the cases are progressing? Then I always think, okay, how how is like everything in India? Yeah. So these things takes a lot of time, and also it gives a lot of tension. Yeah. Okay, right, everyone is okay or not? And then like while I'm working, I will write some code, and then I will switch to news website, and then spend some time there. Yeah. But I was thinking that okay, I'm not able to focus properly. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, this was one of one of the problems. So now I'm trying to okay. Just in the morning and evening, you see news mm. and the rest of the time, focus on your study. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of people have said um, that time is actually going very fast. Yeah. And you wonder, mm. is that, you know, the world actually um, making it go fast so that we can cope with these, these changes in our lives? Um, but also, in another way, I am finding that time has 
that that things have slowed down, like cars on the road have slowed down, people have slowed down, and you're quite right where you need to divide your time up when you focus on news and when you focus on work and you focus on family. Being on a timetable in the home really is, is what you're talking about there. Um, and that's really helpful. So um, I just, I, I'm conscious of time guys and I know you're, you're, uh, you're working a lot on your research and you're you know, engrossed in that and, and all of the other things that are going on. With, with lives at home at the moment. So I just wanted to share a document with you around uh, how to find your, your strength. Um, I think Charmaine sent out a link with regards to the, the character strengths yep. that we use. Yeah. If you haven't got a chance to do that survey, I would recommend doing it when you have time. Um, it's something that I use in the, in the fourth week of the Pathways to Success program in DCU. And it is about um, tapping into your own personal, unique character strengths, which, as I said earlier on, you know, fosters your, your personal relationships and your professional relationships, helps you manage stress and, um, you know, really uh, brings it home to you precisely what your character strengths are. Because it's like all of these things in life, our values our, our strengths, we need to remind ourselves or we need to actually ask a close friend or, or trusted person, what do you think my character strengths are? So just I just want to share a little document that I put together yesterday with you just on finding strengths and the mechanisms and tools that you can use. And I'll email this to Charmaine and maybe she can circulate it to you following our session. Um, so just give me one moment, um, find strengths. So can you see that, guys? Yep. Yeah, so it's, a, it's just a little bit texty, but I just wanted to run through a few little points that came into my mind yesterday while thinking about how to find your, your character strength. So being aware of your interests and um, that really make you smile and make you laugh um, and being aware of the things that you enjoy, particularly in this current climate. So you might find that you're actually enjoying alternative new interests that you may not have enjoyed before or you just were not aware of um, and then to, to, to really tap into what your strengths are is to ask you, yourself how are you adapting and could you adapt further to find an easy flow and to find an ease in, in the, the new circumstances that we're in. Um, being aware of what you value in life. So a few, a few of you there shared, you know, your, your, your conducting research. You have, you have jobs, you have friends. These are all things that people value in, in life, but to really get to know the, what the real you looks like. Um, just a couple of questions that you might keep in the back of your mind and you can, you can hold on to over the next while, you know, how are you managing? Asking yourself that question makes you think, makes you really relate to how you're coping and managing under the circumstances. Um, and what actions are you currently taking to bring joy into your life? So what are you doing? Are you doing anything different? Um, so the online courses, the um, exercise that you mightn't have taken before, um, the really important part of this journey is you know tapping into as i said earlier on the small things and the small things are becoming the big things i i believe um now i'm going to stop sharing that because there's another thing that i just wanted to share with you and that is linked to to strength is is inspiration so how, how do we become inspired through these times that are challenging us? How do we become um, really linked to ourselves and our own spirit and our own, our own soul um, while, we're, while we're finding that times tough and challenging? Um, which also, you know, inspiration and strength are, are linked before we go into our own character strengths. So I'll share another little document um, finding inspiration. <clears throat> so I think, yeah, can you see that guys? 
Yeah. Yeah. So you're creating inspiration and, and finding inspiration in, in your lives. Um, I, I, I came up with a few of these things last night just around tapping into that inner child and being playful. So for those of you who may have children or who, who are in touch with, with cousins or you know, relatives that are, are younger than you guys, to be playful, to, to bring that inner child out in you will, will first of all create a little bit of inspiration. Um, the, the, the learning something new is, is really important um, because you're going to develop a side of your character that you, you may not have, have been aware of before, you may not have tapped into. So, you know, asking new questions, creating new connections, you know, sparking that, in, that curiosity within you um, and digging, digging deep with finding something new or learning something new. So, so like one of the, the, um, the individuals shared there, doing online courses, is really a really good idea. Um, then taking a virtual tour, I saw this myself on television that you can actually take virtual tours in a museum that you may not, you know, have gone to yet and you want to visit. Like you can actually go and take a virtual tour on their website, which I thought was wonderful. And I think a great thing as well for children. Then quiet time. <clears throat> I just mentioned earlier on, like getting in touch with nature um going out for that little bit of uh, exercise that walk fresh air at the moment the weather in ireland i don't know what it's like for you guys in the parts of the world that you're in but the weather here is absolutely beautiful and that in itself is inspiring so acknowledging that um and you know really connecting with with the outside if you can the quiet time, the breathing, the meditation, get in touch with the real you. Very, very ins inspiring. And feeding the mind with good stuff. So, you know, enjoying those podcasts, enjoying those um, people that you listen to. Um, and also, you know, thinking about what, what you enjoy to learn when you're, when you're listening to what you listen to. And, and feeding the mind with good stuff is very positive and very inspiring. Talking to people, getting connected. And if, if I can, at the end, I'd love to show you a little video clip of, um, uh, he's um, a professor who talks about connecting with people during these, um, this physical distancing, this time that we're in. And it really, it's only about seven or eight minutes and I'd love to show it to you if I can. And it came from one of my lecturers and I really, it was very powerful. It was very short, but it was very, uh, it, 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 it really did have an impact on me. So I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll send you that and I'll, I'll hopefully show it to you. Um, journaling. So for those of you who like to write and you're researchers, guys, so you're obviously really, really good at writing. And you know that I know journaling is descriptive and it's personal as opposed to academic, but writing means that you are getting it from your own head down onto paper and you're sorting through any, you know, fear or anxiety that you're experiencing at the moment. Um, and you're working through those, those issues that you may be having, having. So I really, I do it myself. I'm a believer in journaling. Um, you don't have to do it all of the time, but when your body and your mind is, 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 is asking you to, to write it down or to work through something, it doesn't stay there then. It actually, it goes down on paper. Very, very effective. And then a big one for inspiration is to go outside of your comfort zone. So, you know, for me, who's somebody loves to work with people in person, face to face, um, going, I went outside my comfort zone, uh, going online, remotely supporting students. Uh, I was quite, I know I was resistant to it at first. Um, and it, 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 it put me outside of my comfort zone. So when I did it the first time with the group and it, it, it was a success and I got positive feedback, I was, I was delighted. 
so you feel I felt a bit scared at first. How am I really going to connect with my group of students? How am I really going to get my message across? Um, and it is different, you know, talking to people as we are now on the screen, as opposed to when you're physically with somebody, because body language and nonverbal cues give you so much and you learn so much about the person, even with those little pieces that you that you share when you're actually with somebody. But I, I, I got over the feeling a little bit scared and I got excited when it when it worked and when uh, there was success and when I, I felt that students were benefiting from that connection online, that remote support. So there was growth there for me and I'm not as, as resistant as I was initially. So to be patient and to go with the flow and to know that you will be okay, that it will be okay, that we will all get through this, we'll get through it together. Um, and <clears throat> It's so important to remember that, that things don't ever stay the same. I don't think that things change and they evolve and they move on. Um, and that's what I'm keeping to the fore of my mind through this time that um, this will get better. And um, just uh, moving on to a few little points about motivation. Just a few little, little points around, you know, your, um, one, of, one of the individuals there spoke about keeping a focus. So keeping a focus and getting organized, you know, having little to-do lists and checklists is very helpful and reminding yourself of what you've achieved to date and looking at the things you enjoy. So there's a little bit of repetition there, but I just wanted to share those few points with you too. Um, so does anybody have any questions or would they like to share anything at all about what we did, what I kind of highlighted there around uh, inspiration? Does it, does it resonate with any of you? Have I put you to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's so important to keep positive, isn't it? Yeah, and I think I can share something. Lovely, Cheryl. Thank you. So actually, I've been trying to do journaling. And I think um, one of the things that really helped me, um, not only at this time, but in the past, um, usually, like at the end of the day, part of the journaling task is to like write what you are grateful for. Yeah. Like maybe just one, usually I try to write three things, but if there's more, that would be better. I think it's good to be reminded that even if things are not so well these days, it really helps to yeah. know that there are things to be grateful for. Yeah, absolutely, Cheryl. Uh, a gratitude is, is wonderful, isn't it? It's so powerful and yeah. you can really, um, it brings home to you exactly what, you're you're grateful for you know so you're naming it and you're writing it down and it 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 doesn't it doesn't go anywhere you know it's there and you're you're calling it out for yourself so yeah. gratitude is is wonderful and it it means also too that you're 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 accepting of how things are at the moment and you're you're highlighting the positives in life um which is brilliant that's great Cheryl thank you anybody else guys want to share you're a bit quiet I think um you know it's it's a it's a very important thing to be inspired because it keeps us moving forward and it keeps us energized to focus on what we need to do. So if we look at those few pointers that I highlighted, you know, the um, everything will, will work out and everything will be okay. Um, so will, will we move on to the character strengths and um, just having a little chat about those? So the way that the, the character strengths works is we, we use a map and a kind of a, a mass in, in, in DCU when we work on the character strengths. And when you've done the survey, 
it brings up the top strengths, the middle strengths, and then the lesser strengths when you've completed it. And what we do is, is we look at the, the map and we highlight the strengths that are at the, at the, at the top of our character. And we think, about, we think about times and we think about how we actually show up those strengths in our life, okay? And how we might actually apply those strengths to the, to the current times that we're in. So um, let me just share the, the little map with you. Just one moment. Okay. So, so if we were together, okay, that would be on the floor in a, in a huge mass. And it, it gives you um, an idea of how it's all divided up. So this comes from the VIA Institute of Character. And it's, it stemmed from um, an individual who had a child who was experiencing learning differences. And the, 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 the professors and the, um, the psychologists, their positive psychologists that developed this tool to, to tap into the, the character strengths meant that the relationships of the child that was experiencing learning differences um, were enhanced. And the, the character strengths being highlighted and enhanced meant that um, further connections with people were, were gained. And also they found that the, the individuals increased their, their levels of happiness. So from the research that they've done, they've seen an increase in happiness. They've seen um, better quality relationships developed and maintained. And they, they've seen it as improving, as I said earlier on, your, your work engagement. So if you're very aware of what your character strengths are, you can apply them to your personal and your professional life. You can utilize them and, you know, you can manage your, your stress if you're aware of where, first of all, where your stress is coming from, but where your, what your strengths are in order to look after that stress. And then um, you can also possibly identify strengths in other people. So if you're working with a team, if you're working with one individual with regards to your research, you can really tune in to, to their strengths that you can utilize to enhance your, your work engagement and to enhance the quality of your work. So that's what the, the, the little mass looks like. And it's quite large and we, we spread it out on the floor and we um, actually stand on the various strengths, the various character strengths. And we would, we would, you know, share with the group how, how and where these strengths show up in my life. And at the moment, while we're in these challenging times, I think it's a useful exercise to do, to think about what your character strengths are and also what you would like more of possibly during this time. But when we think about what we want more of, how are we going to apply it? How, how are we going to implement what we want more of. Um, so what, what I'll do as well after the session, I'll send this to Charmaine so you can have a further in-depth read of it because you can see there, guys, it breaks down. I'll just go back up to the top, sorry. Do you see where there's a grey um, line around temperance, humanity, wisdom, courage, justice, and um, transcendence? That gray line um, indicates that one, two, three, four, there's six virtues, okay? And the, 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 outer, um, the outer shapes are the, the pathways to those virtues. So, you know, if you are somebody who has a character strength of, of curiosity and creativity, you're really on the pathway to having the, the, the virtue of wisdom. That's the, the idea of the, of the map and of the, the, the mat, how, it's, how it actually works. So, um, and then just to bring you down further guys, it goes through each virtue. So the wisdom virtue, and it explains it. 
cognitive strengths that entail mm-hmm. um, knowledge, um, the acquisition and the use of knowledge. And then it breaks down each of the pathways to that virtue. So um, courage, humanity, uh, tr- uh, transcendence, transcendence um, temperance and justice. So I didn't get a chance to do the survey this time before I met all of you guys. But the last time I did it, um, I'm very much in, in, the, in the virtue of humanity. And I'm going to do it over the next few days because I'm wondering with the change in circumstances in our world and in our lives, um, what, what strengths it'll come up for me. I'm, I'm very, very keen to do it again. But before um, the one, when I, when I did the survey, um, kindness and social intelligence were, were top of my list. So I think you've got about five top character strengths. Another, and the, the previous time, love came up for me. So I'm very much in that virtue of humanity. And I know myself that I really needed to work on um, the, or I wanted more of the zest. So, and when I say zest, I mean um, that, that, that piece that I brought in there under inspiration, the zest, the being... Um, childlike and being playful and being um tapping into that inner child so that um you know it it it, it evokes creativity and and a, a sense of freedom you know so so not being so serious so to to have that element of um inner child fun zest and I definitely when I did the when I did it that was a good good while ago maybe a year ago I I I find it was really prominent in my mind that to bring in that that playfulness to bring in that that zest and that fun and that's something that I think is very important now when we're all at home for me um to while you're working and you're studying you're researching to have time for for the playfulness and the freedom of 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 having fun so um yeah what i'm going to do is i'm going to send it to charmaine and i'll i'll you'll be able to read on it further and whenever you get a chance to do your survey it will be very interesting to see what comes up for you um and hopefully you find it inspirational in itself um and you um you enjoy it because i think it's quite interesting and i think the thing about it is it does appear differently um one thing that came up for me quite towards the end was spirituality which is in there in transcendence and i was quite surprised that came up quite down low because i do believe that i have a sense of um belief um, and I do have a belief, I do have a, a spirituality about me, but maybe, maybe I'm not so aware of, um, I believe that it's more than it actually is. So it's something that I would like to look at and, and work on in, in maybe um, in, this, in this time that we have. Um, so I'm just going to stop sharing that. I'm going to send it to you, and I hope that you find that... Um, useful and interesting and you enjoy it do you would you like to ask me anything about the 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 mat and the character strengths and the the background of it and what it does it make sense to you guys yeah makes sense and did anybody actually complete the survey yeah actually i did it great yeah and then i found that to what i was thinking that i am lacking and this uh, survey also so same thing that my perseverance is like poorest one <laughs> so it is in the last one your perseverance yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> okay that's interesting and why do you think tell me more so actually um, i always find myself doing many things at the same time and not able to focus like on one thing 
at a time and then finishing mm-hmm. it or something yeah. so yeah that becomes a problem okay so you're kind of jumping between several items at the same yes. time yeah. yeah so um with focus it's really important to have the the to-do lists and the the checklists that when you you can i think it's important to be actually working on a few different things at the same time but the the objective is is to complete one and then the second but in order of priority so um it maybe giving um, a level of priority to the tasks that you have will help you focus on what you need to do. So you could have um, five items and you could have a score of one to five and you could say, okay, on, on, on you know, how, how important is that I do this first item? Does it, is it the level of priority is three or four? So five being a high priority, one being a low priority. And it might help you focus. Um, yeah. yeah, I have to do something like that for sure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is anybody else experiencing that, the, the focus, because of the distractions of home and, um, you know, other matters that are going on? Like I mentioned earlier on in my own life, I think that the personal and the professional life is is overlapping and it's not it's not getting the right attention. So I feel like I'm half doing everything. And it's a little bit what you're saying there about focusing. You are jumping from one thing to another. Um, I do have a little uh, few tips on focus. So just give me one moment and I'll just open that up. Um, One second now. Uh, Staying focused. Um, Charmaine, you would have seen this before in, 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 our, in our success program, our Pathways yes. to Success, but I'll just, I'll share it because it's come up there, uh, staying focused. So these are a few little tips that I put together for the group. Yes. Being clear on what you want to do. So, you know, n- not to be vague, to be very specific. Um, it will really help you focus. And then... Um, it, particularly in the current climate, guys, to expect to be put off track. So where at the beginning, when I felt, okay, I'm half doing everything here, I'm being pulled from one thing to the other, I'm, I'm not getting frustrated with it now. I'm going with it. I'm going with it. I'm finding a flow and an ease, and it's not to get upset about um, being put off track because we, we really, particularly now more than ever, we have to accept the fact that we, we may be put off track. Um, and it really, the, the key thing here is, is how we handle it. Um, so accept the obstacles that appear and just to, to think about how you can handle them, you know, and to allow yourself that extra time with family or to allow yourself the extra time with your research, if that's what's required. Um, to schedule it in so anything that brings you closer to your goal to your goal to schedule it in when it is accounted for um, actually that there's a typo there guys um, when time is accounted for unaccounted for it disappears yeah along with the focus so um, so what I'm saying there is is when you when you haven't got your time organized you, you, time loses, it's gone. And I think I'm, we were talking about that at the beginning. Time seems to be going very, very, very fast through this, this crisis. That it's like, a, you know, it's way the world, it's like the world is managing it or something for us um, in another sense or another, another um, uh, the universe is kind of taking, taking the time and it's going quite quickly. Um, but if you can account for your time, so if you can structure and order your routine, you can, time won't go so quickly for you and you'll maintain a focus. Very, very straightforwardly chunk it down, break it down into manageable steps, manageable pieces. So if you are working on four or five pieces at the same time, have it organized and have it, have it broken down into smaller step-by-step items in order for you to, to to, to get to completion, to get to completion point. And that's what's, that's what's really important. Because we could be doing something forever and never actually get to completion yeah. point. 
and that's where we that's what we want to achieve and then being accountable so so you guys are researching and you have do you have a supervisor yeah we yeah have a advisor or supervisor yeah yeah so your supervisor is somebody who you are held accountable to and when we're held accountable we are encouraged and we're in, we're inspired to keep going to keep moving forward because it it again it enables a focus but it's that connection with somebody that you're you're um tapping into that connection that you have with that person you're letting them know how far you've got and then you're working on a plan to move forward again so you're being held accountable by your supervisor and i think particularly uh, I'll send that uh, little document to Charmaine as well so she can share it with you, particularly in these times when I'm um, working from home, guys, and I'm supporting students, talking to students like we're talking now, they're asking me, is it okay that I contact my lecturers? Is it okay that I link up with my supervisor? You need to do that more than ever now. You really need to connect with your supervisors more than ever because they are expecting it. And they are going to know how you are and how you are managing your research, your your academic commitment. If you you link in with your supervisors now more than ever, because we're not having you're not having that physical contact, linking up by email and by what, what how we are now with Zoom is crucial. It's so important. Um. So I just I want to try and see if I can show you this little video. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. Because I've just taken out my um, my earphones because you need to take those out when you want to when you want to show a video. So let me know if this works. Just give me one second. So this is um, count, the countering effect of distancing, uh, countering effect of physical distancing, and it's really interesting. These are really difficult times. They certainly are, and the, there's an irony going on because uh, we have to avoid becoming infected. There's no question that the COVID-19 virus is a health risk, especially to those of us who are more mature. It, it's real. The question is the way that we need to behave to reduce that risk is really through social isolation. And this now creates this amazing paradox in our nervous system and our needs to interact with other people. Because as humans, our, our need is to connect and to co-regulate with others, but we're being told that this is not the right thing to do. So there are priorities, and the priorities are not to get infected, but there's also a priority of understanding the needs of our nervous system. And as so, we, so this is a, this is a counterintuitive situation where we cannot trust our instinct, our evolutionary instinct because we have to do something different, not from coercion, but actually from understanding that social isolation is required at this point. I think that is really a nice way of explaining the paradox through which a nervous system is trying to navigate. And that is, we are, and we need to socially isolate. However, our nervous system hey, that's not the way we evolved. It's not the way we need to be. We need to co-regulate. So we need to be smart now. We need to know what the true priorities are. And the priority, of course, is, is to stay alive. But how can we mitigate that nervous system's demand or request or passion to connect? And we'll do that, or we have to do that through telephone and through video chat. Chatting are really reasonably good. And email is okay, but the value of hearing someone's voice or seeing someone's face is powerful to our nervous system. So we have to reach out. I, I've, it's been remarkable over the past, actually past few days, because the world turned around in a week. A week ago, I was in New York City, and New York City was elbow to elbow, and uh, I was 
talking and it was at a conference that was was uh, overbooked and my comment was i'll give people hugs i'll shake their hands uh this month but next month i will do something different and within a few days the world changed and we realized that it wasn't a uh, a a fear of a virus that was really distal in time it was there and we need to really take care of ourselves and to really monitor our body's need to connect, to give that person a hug, to smile, to be reassuring, to touch them uh, on their shoulders or on their hands, to let them know that you were there to support them or, or with them. And what I've noticed over the past few days is some of my very close friends have reached out through video conferencing, through phone calls, just to connect. It's, it's really a, a beautiful moment when people are reaching out to say, I'm here, how are you, what can I do for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we don't kill that impulse to connect. Mm -hmm. We rechannel it and savor it yeah. uh, as we find ways to do it through voice and sight, phone, video conferencing. Yeah, we modify because we are, you know, a, a relatively intelligent species at times, we're not so sure about that. But we're reading our bodily feelings, and our bodily feelings want to be held, want to be embraced, want to be safe with the people with whom we trust. And that's basically a neural circuit that's reaching out. And we're really saying to that neural circuit, we can't do that. Now, if we don't engage people for a period of time, we go into another state. And that is we become marginalized and we start this as becoming too isolated. And this is really very, very bad for our nervous system. And our body will react to that with a bias of negativity. And this is the other issue that as we separate the notions of being overly concerned or neurotic or paranoid about the situation will increase because we are not getting sufficient opportunities to co-regulate. So being smart, we need to reach out and use the tools that we have. The internet is a, it is a useful tool. We can do video conferencing and we can talk and we can hear each other's voices and we can feel connected again. It's not equivalent to being in the room with a person, but it's a lot better than not having any contact. But so um, then when we connect, when we communicate this way, there is an intentionality that the communication is not just about the content, but mm -hmm. the communication is about the co-regulating, is about that essence you know, of connection that we crave. Absolutely, because it's not the words, it's the intentionality of feelings that we're communicating with each other. We're creating a capacity to co-regulate each other's physiological and emotional and behavioral state. And as we co-regulate each other, we feel safer in the space and time that we're in. And we become more generous to others, more welcoming and more accessible. As we isolate and separate our bodies, our nervous system become more defensive. So it literally uh, uh, continues this, uh, the feelings of isolation and defensiveness. So we have to be smart and we have to recalor or reframe what isolation is in this situation. It's a defense but we don't want it to blend or bleed into becoming defensive of our interactions with others. And so we need to really reach out, use the tools that are available to us and engage others, use our voices, use our facial expressions. Uh, with a video chatting, it's a lot better than texting. The issue of texting and email is that you're stripping the voice and the face from the words and our nervous systems evolve to detect intonation. And it's only through long, a long period of evolution that our nervous system was able to create language and to create syntax and to extract meaning from symbols. So we want to relate to each other on a very, almost a primitive level, and that is facial expressivity and intonation of voice. And we have for the voice, and we have video, video chatting for voice and facial expressions. And so maybe we can even go one step further than simply chatting on the phone or video conferencing, is as we are in communication, 
uh, maybe consciously pay attention to what's happening in our body and maybe communicating with each other that what we're doing is not just exchanging content, exchanging news, but that the process of co-regulating, for instance, as we talk, I am feeling my energy coming down a bit. I'm feeling set, more settling, a sense of settling and grounding. And you're, notice you're, that. You're feeling a connectedness. And yeah. what you're really emphasizing is that it's not a show and tell. Yeah. It's a co-regulation. And we yeah. have ter terms that we use, um, mirroring or tuning or synchrony. But really, it's all about co-regulating. And what you were emphasizing was to acknowledge one's own feelings. I would go a step further, and that is to monitor and acknowledge the feelings of the one that you're talking to. Yeah. So you're, you're reaching literally into their, uh, their sphere, their consciousness, their nervous system, and you're really saying, I'm present, I'm there with you. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very, that's a, it's, a, it's a good step. We're talking about reaching out. Reaching in and reaching out, reaching inside, reaching out to the other person, monitoring myself, monitoring each other, and having a sense of this is what connection is about, and this is how we're experiencing as we're connecting. Yes, yeah, so I think that's a very good summary of the message. Thanks, Steve. Uh, you're quite welcome, Serge, and it's good to connect during this time with you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, guys, I, I, that actually felt a little bit longer than, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, I, just, I felt it um, was a good, very good, short um, synopsis of, of how to connect and understanding, you know, seeing the face and the facial expressions and as I said earlier on, the nonverbal cues of, of, a, of a smile or um, the way people express through through their faces and their other senses really is so important for this time. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that you got uh, you learned something from it because it made total sense to me around the the co-regulation and actually how you can experience and see people use this time, this isolation time as a further isolation, further disconnect from the, the relationships or the, the people that they once would have been connected to. Um, and that's where your nervous system goes into a little bit of chaos if, if you isolate yourself further um, from, from connecting from people with people that, that are near and, and dear to you. Um, so I suppose the big message there is to keep, keep connected, you know, whether it's visually or via email, but I think what his, his message was that seeing the person is the most important thing. Um, so yeah, guys, that's really my little piece on character strengths and on finding inspiration and finding strength. I hope you picked up a couple of little tips and ideas that you can apply to your lives. And um, you all look very well and healthy and bright, which is, lovely to see um, and it's been it's been a wonderful opportunity to to talk to you i just i'd love to hear from you and how you found it um what you think and how you're how you're getting on maybe it'll create new connections for us you know and, uh, yeah so thank you caroline for this wonderful session i'm sure we got a lot of um pointers that we can apply to our lives, especially that we need to stay connected in this situation and then we need to stay focused. Absolutely. Thank you for the pointers that you have given to me. So we will share the materials to our participants. And yeah, so thank you. Maybe some other participants to share something or last message. Uh, sorry, uh, I yeah. also want that materials uh, yeah. about as you remember the map. Yeah. Um, I also want to take that materials if you don't mind, of course. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I will. I'll send everything to Charmaine and she can circulate it to all of you. 
um, each of the pieces that I shared with you on the screen, I'll send them all to Charmaine and you can you can register with the VI, VIA Institute of Character and, and look at their resources. They've got really, really good online resources. And again, like so many organizations around the world now, they are um, providing online resources for this particular time that we're, we're in. Um, to, so you could, you could, if you wanted to do some further research on your character strength, you could use their online resources also. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Caroline. So anyone else? Yeah, Abdul. Abdul. Uh, yeah, my question is how to manage uh, Aaron's emotional bondage during this period because I'm a researcher, I'm staying in other place, but my parents are in some other location. Yeah. How to manage the parent emotional bondage during this period? The, the emotional, what's the second word you're saying, Abdul? Yeah, parents emotional bondage because uh, so I'm in some other place, my parents are in some other location or away from my location. Yeah. So I'm doing a research. So what my parents are asking is everybody's on home. So I are still doing some other research activities. So you also come to join with us and enjoy this moment and safe from this situation. So my question, how to manage or how to uh, convey my situation to my parents? Yeah. So to to relay your situation to your parents, Abdul, to let them know how you are and it's that separation, is it? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, really, you you're looking at managing yourself where you are and also maybe communicating to your parents how you are and how you're managing will instill some some ideas of how they can cope and manage while you are separated and while you're in different places. Um, but to, to find a peace of mind with it, it's very, very challenging, very tough to be in two different places and to be far away. Um, there's a few things you can do. I mean, connecting like we are now with them, if that's possible. Um, but while you're in your own space to, to look at ways that you can manage your your emotions so by through mediate through meditation and through mindfulness is is very very fruitful and very powerful really um and again that 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 separation but but really acknowledging your your emotions through this time and you can acknowledge them by writing them down you can acknowledge them by um, communicating them to your parents and to other family members of how you are actually managing this time and to find out how they're managing their time and you you'll find some common features between their experience and your experience and and with that comes you know a sense of of hope and peace as well um, but with your own emotions, Abdul, I would say, you know, confide in a friend via Zoom, confide in um, somebody you trust um, and, and to communicate as best you can with, with the people that you care, care about um, and then writing, writing it down. I hope, okay. that help, hope that helps. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I think we'll end the session this time. So again, thank you, Caroline, for accepting our invitation to have this little session for our students, for our members. And so this will be the last session for this week. And for the schedule for next week, we will just send you the information in email and we will post it in the social media and website. So yeah, so again, thank you very much. And Hope to see you thank again you. next time. Yes. Bye. 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 B